And Tutu version 10 has finally been released and after having tested version 9 for the past two years now, I'm extremely excited to see all the new changes and even more excited to see how well these five incredible flagship smartphones perform in Antutu's latest benchmark. As well as three other heavy hitting benchmarks where we will test out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness level using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. And while all of their chipsets are run on TSMC's four nanometer process, the three phones on the left are stacked slightly different since they pack in Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipsets with the Samsung having the highest main core clock speed. The Huawei is the only one here that is still stuck on LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage, while the rest of the devices are all rocking the latest LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage. All of them have 120Hz displays, but only the Samsung, Xiaomi, and Huawei use LTPO technology. The Red Magic's resolution is limited to Full HD+, so I've dropped the rest to match it, and all of them have been set to their respective of high performance mode, with the Red Magic taking things even further due to its built-in cooling fan. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu, Geekbench 5, Geekbench 6 and 3 Mark, and between each benchmark we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. Which of these five devices will come out on top of Antutu's latest benchmark? Which will be the most consistent? Which will be the most efficient? And which will keep the temperature the lowest? This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. Before getting things underway, we're gonna be recording the percentages of their battery level at the start of the test. We'll compare this at the end to get a battery milliamp hour per minute drain. We'll also be testing out the temperature with an infrared heat gun between each benchmark test. And I'll start by testing their temperatures right now. And so far we have the Samsung as the coolest and the Red Magic as the hottest, which is strange since the Red Magic has an active cooling fan. We kick starting things off here with Antutu version 10. Now you guys have to bear in mind that this is still an open beta. Open beta Beta 2 that is, but we have yet to find or get a final release of version 10. Now, just to tell you a couple things that have changed. When it comes to GPU, which is what we're seeing right now, it is based on Unreal Engine 4, and there are two new 3D test scenes. That being a high stress test known as Seasons, which is this one. The next one is known as Coastline 2.0. Two generations ago, we had Coastline. This is Coastline 2.0 for ordinary GPUs. So they have scrapped Swordsman, Refinery, and Terracotta Soldiers. And I'm pretty upset that Terracotta Soldiers has disappeared now since I actually went there and it was just always cool to see it in this test. Nevertheless, we have also seen a couple changes in terms of CPU. They have optimized support for multi-core parallel processing, which is awesome to see. And in terms of memory, the ROM has been optimized to improve test efficiency. And in terms of RAM, they have now divided into two parts that being bandwidth and latency to clearly demonstrate LPDDR performance. And now in terms of user experience, they have now added PDF document processing capability. They've added processing capability of large pixel images above a 2K resolution. They've also added decoding of H.265 and encoding of H.264 to more comprehensively evaluate the device video processing ability. And it's also interesting to see that they have now added like a test to test out video editing capabilities within the test, which you'll see a little bit later on. We're ending off Coastline 2.0 at the moment in the GPU section over here. And later on, when we get to the video editing, you'll see something called Geelin landscape. Geelin is actually a city in China known for its unique landscapes. We'll get to that a little bit later on, but they actually have a video editing section within Antutu now, which is really interesting because a lot of people have actually started editing videos within their smartphones. I think it's a bit odd. I have to use a PC or a laptop to edit, but I've actually seen a few guys, especially at MWC recently, who've been editing on the go on their phones. It just shows you how far phones have come. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but I've actually sped the test up here and there, and I've left it at 100% speed when we are in the nitty gritty in the bulk of the tests. We're busy encoding and decoding video right now. That's what's happening at the 90% mark here in Antutu. You can see the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones on the left-hand side are performing slightly quicker than the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 powered Huawei P60 Pro and the Dimensity 9200 powered Vivo X90 Pro all the way on the right-hand side. So we will most certainly see the 8 Gen 2 chipped phones on the left finish quicker and they did slightly quicker that is. Now after testing out Antutu over here, we got the highest temp 
gain on the Vivo and it also has the highest temp. The lowest temp gain was actually the Red Magic thanks to that physical cooling fan within it. And the coolest phone overall is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, which is actually quite surprising because Samsung don't have the best track record of keeping things cool. Red Magic do because they've always had an active cool fan. And we just ran through Geekbench version five there. That was extremely quick because version five is only about a minute to finish. And the Red Magic and Xiaomi both added the most in terms of temperature, while the Vivo got the hottest and the Samsung got the coolest, well, is the coolest, and it actually went negative in degrees Celsius, which means that it might have throttled a bit there. Now we do have Geekbench version six here and it is an upgrade to version five and you cannot compare the two at all. They're completely different benchmarks because they have changed the structure of the multi-core process and the Samsung was once again the coolest, but this time the Vivo actually went negative. So it added the least in degrees Celsius here, which means it throttled as well. The Huawei got the hottest and added the most in terms of temperature between Geekbench version five and Geekbench version six finishing that one off. Now we're running 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme here. This is the same as the normal one, the non-extreme version though. This renders at 4K resolution instead of WQHD or 2K resolution, I guess you could say. And that is because the normal one, all of these devices hit the max and they all kind of have a cap. So this is more accurate to be able to compare apples to apples over here. Well, even though there's no Apple here since there's no Intuitive version. 10 for iPhone yet, that's why it's not included in this video and you can't really compare them anyway. But we want to compare them with the Wildlife Extreme benchmark here since it's a lot harder to render 4K contents on these phones even though they are flagships. Now ending off with temperature results after 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, it will be interesting to see how they went from the start to the finish, but after Wildlife Extreme from the end of Geekbench 6 to the end of this, the Samsung once again stayed the coolest, but the Huawei this time added the least in degrees Celsius, the Vivo added the most, and the Vivo was the hottest once again over here. But in terms of overall device temperature from start to finish. The Red Magic didn't end off the coolest, the Samsung ended off the coolest, but the Red Magic added the least in terms of degrees Celsius here, which is good to see. And the Vivo got the hottest overall at the end and added a whopping 23.5 degrees in Celsius. But in all honesty, the Huawei wasn't too far off it. Now in terms of battery performance, if you look at my previous benchmark test videos, you can't really compare these because we now have Antutu version 10, which sucks up more power from these devices. And we also have an additional benchmark that being Geekbench version 6. So looking at the milliamp hour per minute reading, the Samsung and Xiaomi had the best milliamp hour per minute drain over here and the Vivo had the worst with the Red Magic not far behind it. Though the Red Magic did have the least amount of percent drain that being only 9% over here, it does have the largest battery that being 6,000 milliamp hours which is why its milliamp hour per minute reading was so high. Now what we've all finally been waiting for, the Antutu version 10 results and the highest place here was the Red Magic 8 Pro and I'm not surprised this thing is an absolute beast with almost a million six hundred thousand points which is ridiculous not far behind that is the Xiaomi then we have the Samsung the interesting thing to note here is that the Samsung had the best GPU score and that is because it is using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy chipset so it has a slightly boosted clock speed in terms of its Adreno 740 GPU now when it comes to Geekbench version 5 first place here is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra because its main core clock speed is slightly higher. Second is the Red Magic, third the Xiaomi, fourth is again the Vivo, and fifth is the Huawei. But things get flipped around a bit when it comes to multi-core score in Geekbench version five. First is the Red Magic, second is the Xiaomi, third is the Samsung, and again, fourth is the Vivo, and fifth is the Huawei. Now, when it comes to Geekbench version six, scores are different, which is why we have first place going toward the Xiaomi here. Second, not far behind the Xiaomi is the Samsung. It's weird to see the Huawei come out on top of the Red Magic over here since it's using last generation chipsets and the Vivo this time around came dead last, which is very weird to see. Now, because Geekbench version six is very focused on multi-core performance, it's no surprise to see the Red Magic come out on top because its clock speeds of its multi-cores are identical to that of the Samsung, which is weird. The Samsung plays third here. Xiaomi came second. And then this time we have the Huawei ahead of the Vivo. Now it's no surprise to see the Red Magic 8 Pro top the charts in terms of 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme over here, but it is a 
bit surprising to see the Samsung not perform better over here since it does have a boosted clock speed for its integrated Adreno 740 GPU inside it. And this time we have the Vivo ahead of the Huawei. So if you look at the overall scoreboard over here, it's no surprise to see the red magic almost come out on top every single time except it's weird to see it place fourth in single core Geekbench 6. The Samsung and Xiaomi both did pretty well too, considering they're using the same chipset, and it's no surprise to see the Vivo and the Huawei lag behind a bit here. But MediaTek are very much down Qualcomm's throats at the moment, so it'll be interesting to see what happens within the foreseeable future. It'll also be interesting to see what happens when iOS finally gets the updates of Antutu version 10, so stay tuned for that one because I'm super excited to see what the iPhone 14 Pro Max or even the future iPhone 15 series does with Antutu version 10. Let me know your thoughts on Antutu's latest benchmark and all the other benchmarks that I tested, as well as your scores from your current smartphone in Antutu's latest benchmark. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.